Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we have... What's in the box? What's in the box? It's from Junk Food Customs. It is a micro... Snack box. HD. Let's open this thing up and take a look at it real quick. So... It comes with this sticker, which you can't see very well. There we go, you can kind of see it in my light now. Uh, it says, please do not update your micro OS and micro board with any software that does not come from our site. Your snack box micro uses a custom firmware and returns won't be accepted if the wrong update is applied. So let's say it's snack box. So what I'm going to do is I might need a knife for this. Pretty sure I'm going to need a knife for this. Let's see if my old muscles will do this. Probably making a weird face. Okay. 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 It's fair. I'm not going to break my controller doing this. Okay. Oh, it's upside down. There we go. Okay. So this thing's weird. Uh, I got this on a whim. Yeah, I know, it's kind of expensive for a whim. This is going to be, well, depending on where you're facing, away, down, forward, jump, and then these are all your little hit buttons. You can hear, we've actually got a really nice mechanical sound. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to spend some time playing with this and show you its size comparison versus it, versus an actual arcade stick, um, of which I have quite a few. Ooh. Well, that's kind of nice. Um, on the back, it's actually got this pad. And it's sort of foamish, because it, it, you can't see it, but it presses in a little bit. I'll try to get some nice shots of this, too, so you guys can kind of see it. Um, and it should. Yeah, it, it actually kind of sits on my lap pretty nice. I was afraid that it was so small that when I put it down, it wouldn't really sit on my lap very well, and it would like keep falling off into the floor and stuff. So we're going to play around with this a little bit, and we're going to see how this turns out. So stick with me, guys, and let's have some fun. Okay, so here is the hitbox just out of the box. Now, this is, again, once again, this is the micro snack box by Junk Food Arcade Customs, if you guys did not know that. Now, as we pick it up, it's actually a pretty good size. It's pretty small. I can almost palm it in my hand. And it's got a pretty good weight to it. Um, you can see it's actually really, really thin and feels really well constructed and fairly heavy for its size. Now, I know you guys are kind of looking at this buttons and you're kind of thinking, oh my god, what the heck is this thing and how do I use it? This looks really, really alien. Well, it is to an extent. This goes back to the day where people would use their keyboard and use the WSAD keys or they would use the up, down, left, right keys in order to maneuver the fighter and then they would use the number keys on the number pad in order to actually, you know, actually hit the opponent. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go over how the buttons are laid out on this so you can kind of understand it a little bit better overall. So that said, what you're going to notice is that some of the buttons here, like if depending on if you're facing left or not that is going to be back that uh, that's going to be down and then forward and then that's going to be jump and the way i place my hands is i keep my two middle fingers together because i find one of mine isn't too fast i use my pinky and my index finger in order to do the motion on there uh, that's what works best for me because i find some of my fingers are old and slow and then i keep my thumb right next to the jump button as well and then the rest of those buttons work like any other arcade stick that you might have and function with that way and they all sound and press really well the idea is to essentially be able to keep your hands in a position more like a mechanical keyboard keyboard so that you don't wear out your wrist or anything like that on like a regular arcade stick and you can play fighting games for a longer time without any kind of wrist issues uh, this is more of a problem for uh, i'd say more professional fighting game players but we're going to go and plug this thing in. It uses a micro USB cable. 
um, I'll just plug that into the back that plugs in pretty firmly then you'll see it takes a minute and boots up and it's got a particular lighting mode that I set up a little bit earlier so we're gonna go ahead and go through all these buttons here along the top that is going to be your start button the next one is gonna be your select button that's gonna be your home button that's gonna be your touchpad button that's gonna be your R3 and your L3 and then you're gonna have your light edit button and that's the one we're gonna focus on the most so as we go ahead and look at the light edit button what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and press that and hold that for a little bit and then as we do that it should turn red it will take a minute for it to turn red and then once it does you'll be able to go into edit mode once you're actually in edit mode you'll see that you've got some of these things lit up the ones on the right most allow you to change the primary color and the secondary color of the button the primary color being what the button looks like when you first press it and what it changes to so you can change that to any number of colors that you want these next two buttons in allow you to adjust the brightness of the button so you can either lower the brightness or increase the brightness as you choose and then the last two let you cycle through the various different lighting options so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go through some of the lighting options now just so you guys can kind of see right now we're on six and that is heartbeat we're going to go back another one and that's going to put us on five and that's called this or that we're going to hit it again and that's going to take us to cylon which i think looks particularly cool we're going to hit it again and we'll be on breathing which means it'll dim and brighten if we hit it again it will go to rainbow which is a variation of what i had before if we press it again it's going to be cylon wipe redux and if we hit it one more time it will turn all the lighting options off so you don't have to have any lighting at all so what we're going to do is we're going to cycle back up through the lighting sequences here because I had this on seven to start, which is rainbow with glitter. So it does those little sparks on the side, which I think are quite pretty. We move up one more, you're gonna see juggle. Up one more, you're gonna see Einlon. I don't know how to pronounce this one. And one more will allow you to juggle through all the various different modes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this back to the one that I particularly prefer. And then we'll leave it there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the lighting button and hold it again. And this time it should go green. And once it goes green, you have now programmed your hitbox. So you can see it's got the lighting mode that I chose. And then when I hit the button, it goes blue and then it fades to red. And then it will turn off and it functions that way for all the buttons. And there you go. That's how you program this thing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of like Take a look at the back. I'll pull it up here so you can kind of take a look at it a little bit more, get a closer look at it. You can see here on the pad, um, it's got a good kind of foam pad so that it's kind of no slip. That way you don't have to worry so much about it sliding around when it's on your lap or on the desk or anything of that nature. It's really well constructed. It's a nice foam pad. It feels like really good quality. Um, I like it quite a bit. It's even got a micro on the back of it. So if we flip this around back on the front here, I'm going to show you the case that I bought with it. This was an extra charge. This does not come with it, but I think it's a nice little case and it just slips right in there. I think it's actually pretty nice. And it also comes with the braided cable, which is pretty easily replaceable. It's just a micro USB cable. But at this point, we're going to go ahead and start getting this thing and taking it through its paces so you can guys kind of see it on some dummies. Maybe we'll do some real fights and I'll show it in a couple of different games so you guys can kind of see how this functions in various different games and the like. So hang tight and let's go ahead and get into that part, shall we? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump into a fight here. Uh, I'm going to pick Ryu because he's a pretty basic Shido character and I'll just go ahead and pick somebody else at random so that we have somebody to spar against. That way you guys can see basic Shido character in a Street Fighter game. The reason I always pick this character whenever I show anything like this off is because, well, those motions are used in pretty much every single game. Oh, and we got Ken, who is absolutely terrible looking in that outfit, but whatever. Young Ken looks really bad. Those eyes are really, really disconcerting. Uh, <laughs> okay. Wow. Wow, oh, I can't get over that. Okay, you can stop showing me Luke anytime. There we go. So, now we're in. You can see back is back. That's the back button. That's the forward button when you're on the left side. There's down. And there's jump. So you might ask, okay, well, that's fine. How do I jump? You press those two buttons. 
So if you want to jump back, you'll press those two buttons. So there you go. There's your back and your forward jump. Well, okay. Well, how do I do a, say, a fireball? Well, there you go. Just roll your fingers down to forward, and there's your fireball. So execute a few of those, and how do you do a hurricane kick? There you go. Just the same motion backwards. All right. Well, how do I do an uppercut? Like that. They actually execute pretty quick. Now, doing them from the left side or from the right side, I'm usually pretty bad at. There we go. Got one. Cool. But you can see, most of the basic shoot -em moves are actually pretty solid in this. You can execute them pretty reliable. See, here I'm able to actually execute a super. That was just rolling my fingers twice, but you can also swipe across like that. And there you go. So you can either use the swipe method and just swipe twice, or you can roll your fingers twice very quickly. I find the motion pretty natural and pretty easily, um, pretty easy to do in this. But I think at this point we should probably go ahead and show you like maybe a different character, like more of a charge character. So what we're going to do is we're going to move over and we're going to go to the character select screen again. And then we're going to go ahead and go to Guile. Um, once we go ahead and pick Guile, we'll go ahead and get him an opponent, and then we'll go ahead and drop in. Now, hitboxes are kind of designed really well for charge style characters. You can just press back and then snap forward. Now, they used to have a thing where you could hold charge back and then press forward and continue to hold back but they've since kind of like eliminated that because it was considered unfair for tournaments so in order to balance things out better they pretty much left it to where you can't do that anymore so you have to let go of back and press forward in order to launch like say sonic boom uh, conversely when you want to do like a hurricane kick or flash kick you have to press down charge it and then release and press up in order to get it to execute. Um, that's pretty much to compensate for the fact that they don't want you continuously charging. Uh, you'll notice that as I'm playing through this my flow is a little off. It's actually pretty bad. Uh, there's a lot of times where I kind of miss my flash kicks and things like that uh, to where I, I just think I'm not executing them because I'm not releasing down before I press up to execute. That's more of an execution problem on my part than it actually is anything to do with the actual hitbox. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and move to a 360 character next. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to go try to find Zangief. And once we have Zangief, we're going to go ahead and go back into a fight. And then I'm going to see if we can do some half circle and some quarter circle motions. Um, to show you guys those. Oh, I'm sorry, half circle and 360 motions, not quarter circle motions. You've already seen those. So, let's go ahead and get into a fight here. One of the things that always annoys me a little bit about Street Fighter V is the fact that they seem to consistently want to show me splash screens. So, do a half circle back and kick. You can see that very quickly executes. You barely see the animation. And all I'm doing is doing forward, down, back, forward, down, back, boom, kick, and there you go. Now, 360s are a little more complicated. You do the same roll motion, but you don't have to do it in any one direction because it's a 360. So you can do the same roll, but then you have to press, jump, and punch at the same time. So roll and jump and punch. There you go. So you can see I can kind of do that for days. What I'm going to try to do during this is I'm kind of spastically spazzing out on this. Mostly because I'm trying to actually get a 720. Um, the 720 is kind of awkward on this. Uh, it's awkward for me on an arcade stick. It's not any different on a hitbox. It's one of those things I always kind of struggle with in these games because I'm just not very good with grappling characters. Next, getting a 720 for me is particularly hard. Usually you have to get locked in a punch animation in order to do it. And I find it even hard to do that here. Uh, that was the only way I was even semi-reliably able to do it in an arcade stick. And even then, it was only like maybe 30% of the time at best. Here, it's more like 5%. 
I think I get it off like one time here, and I think I've gotten it off like one time before, and that's about it. Yeah, I'm just not having any luck here with this right now. There, I don't know, no, no, that's just another 360. Like I said, I can execute those for days. 720, that's the problem. Give it a couple more goes here. Oh look, another 360. You guys haven't seen that before. There we go, that did it, okay. And so there you go. There's your 360 characters for the most part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and jump out of here, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you some characters from like Mortal Kombat, and then we'll probably move on to say something like Tekken possibly. So I've taken the liberty of pretty much selecting Sub-Zero here, so we can go over some of the basic moves in Mortal Kombat. You can see the Ice Ball works pretty well. Normal basic combo, roughly a 9 hitter with an Amplify that works out pretty well. Um, jump Kick and Slide works well. And then I'm going to try to execute a few Amplifications here. Um, kind of struggling, but there we go, there's the normal Fireball. There's the Amplified, so that should actually go through projectiles. So what we're going to do is we're going to select a different character because my combos with Sub-Zero are a little lacking. They're kind of basic, usually 9 to 12 hitters. Select new Cybot, and then go in the, the Total Blackness one, which I think is the one that I use more often than not. Select a random opponent here and jump in. Uh, Nightwolf, select a random Sage. And hopefully we'll load in pretty quick here. There we go. So let's go ahead and execute a quick combo here. Should be able to execute something fairly decent here. Amplify into the remainder of the combo and there's an easy 12 hitter for you. So you can tell already just from basically watching me do like one or two of those that teleport motions like down up motions on a hitbox are really fast and really, really accurate. So if you ever have problems with those before where you don't do it quite quick enough and you accidentally jump, I can almost 100% guarantee you somebody who's had that problem in the past, those are not a problem with a hitbox. Um, that problem's pretty much 100% eliminated by using it. Um, really don't do any kind of teleport motion that you don't want to do, which means Raiden players or people that want to learn to play Raiden that for some reason start moving to more of a diagonal one way or another. Um, won't have a problem with that in this. So I think at this point we're going to go ahead and move over to Tekken and kind of show you guys that for a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and select Jen and select down to the random opponent, go into a random stage, and do some practice here. I'll probably get into some actual fights here. I want to show you guys some things actually in motion. Tekken's not the best one to do it with because I'm pretty terrible at Tekken, quite frankly. Um, abysmal. There's a better way to describe it. But you can see, moving in and out on the screen is really easy. It's just a quick double tap, jump works fine. Um, all those motions work perfectly normal. There's no problem with those whatsoever. Let's just do a few practice combos here, get a couple things going. Um, I'm going to try to, at some point here, get a few of Jin's uppercuts and his little leg sweep that requires the almost uh, dragon punch motion. It's not quite a dragon punch because the timing is slightly different. Uh, but you can see here I'm trying, I'm kind of trying to execute it now, and there goes one of them. So let's try to do a few more of them here. I don't know if I can get it to go off. Not great with this motion. There we go. There's another one. And there we go. There's another one. It's a little weird because you have to like do the first motion, the pause, and then do the rest of the motion, and it's just awkward to do. There's the leg sweep version of it. It's just the same motion with like a kick. There's something you can do after that, but I cannot remember. It's been so long since I played Tekken. I got passingly decent with Jin, and then I lost like all my skill with Jin. So I think at this point we're gonna go ahead and move into a couple fights with Jin. So you can watch me play badly with Jin. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Jen selected here. And jump in a 
I want to say treasure battle is what pretty much what I selected for this. So let's see how badly this goes. <laughs> I have not played this in so long. All right, so not a too bad of a start. Ow. All right. Key. Yeah, showing that lack of skill I told you guys about. Let's see if we can still pull this out. Ugh. All right. Let's just see if we can catch him in the air with this. That move is almost tax with how much range it has to be able to catch somebody like that. Hopefully I can catch him on the ground. There we go. Okay. So we salvage that round. So I think at this point we're going to go ahead and go back and we're going to finish up here and essentially show, do the wrap up for the whole thing. So stick with me. Well, if you made it this far in the video, thank you very, very much for hanging out with me. Um, I felt it was a pretty in-depth review, but I thought something like this kind of needed it. One, not only to explain the product, but to kind of go over what I liked and what I didn't like about it. Kind of sum up, I love the construction of it. I really do like the size. I wouldn't mind having one that's a little bit bigger, quite frankly, to have more space. Um, this is so, so small. It will easily, like the fact that I can hold this in the palm of my hand, and I'm not a big person, my hand is relatively small, can tell you just how small this thing is. My big gripe with it is none of the buttons are labeled. None of these buttons here on the top are really labeled. I kind of wish they were. I understand why they didn't, because they're using a universal fighting board. Uh, I didn't get any footage of using it on anything other than PC. I expect this to work perfectly fine on PS4. I expect it to work fine on something like, say, 360, Xbox One, and the Switch. If you guys really want, I can go into this some more, and I can show some gameplay footage of it being played on those particular systems if you like. But I thought I was kind of pushing it at roughly 21 minutes before I started doing this segment. So <laughs> I should stop for today. And thank you for watching. And ask you, if you got this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me with the metrics. Uh, it lets me know that you kind of like what I'm doing. Um, you like what the channel's doing, or you at least like this video. Um, it also lets me know you might want to see more content like this from me, which I'm always up for doing whenever I can afford to buy something like this. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and take off and wish you guys a great day and happy gaming.